Hello and welcome back, it's the Clay Golem here. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and this is part of our automation series. So we've looked at a fair few bits um, but we've still got lots to do. Uh, we're going to look at our next module that complements the MIDI QOL family. It is not vital. Um, although by the time we get to the end of this video, you might change your mind and say, yeah, it's kind of vital for the automation because it does some really groovy things for us. What are we looking at? We're looking at Gambit's pre-mades. So uh, we've still got to get to Chris's pre-mades, but we're on Gambit's pre-mades. Now, the great thing is, is Gambit and Chris work quite closely. So some things Gambit covers, Chris doesn't bother covering because Gambit's got it uh, and vice versa. Uh, and Gambit, we've looked at Gambit's pre-mades previously under version 11 and what it can do for us. And obviously it's had a lot of updates. Now, with quite a few of these, whether it's the MIDI SRD, it's bringing in from DDB Importer, we have access to some items through Gambit's pre-made. So we're going to come back to some of these features in a bit. But if we look at our compendium packs you can already see I've got a couple open on the left there look how many compendium packs we've now got now the good thing is gambits are all GPS okay so gambits pre-made nobody's too sure what the s4 go for system <laughs> uh, so gambits pre-made he's got third party features so there's a few uh, bits on here for druid and for witch um, some party items um, there's some actors, there's an electric eel for a particular, obviously has, uh, you know, it's an electric eel, it's got some particular abilities, they've built that. We've got some class features in for Barbarians, Reckless Attack. Now I did try this to see, hang on a minute, we've already got Reckless Attack, Sorryman's already got Reckless Attack, and it works perfectly because that's come through from DDBI, uh, sorry, DDB Importer. So it's pulled that through um, from there and it works absolutely fine. So I don't need Gambit's Reckless Attack as well because I've already got it. But if you're not using DDBI, uh, sorry, DDB Importer, it will get the name right. I just want to keep putting extra eyes in. If you're not using that for whatever reason, and you don't have to, you might not even have a D&D uh, &D Beyond account. You might be purely building stuff in Foundry. Great. Well, in that case, DDB Importer is not going to do the job for you. Doesn't matter. You'll find them in nearly all of them you're going to find in these other places so um, we did have in that video of the DDBI about the fact that the uh, DDB importer does bring in a lot of noise and a lot of derp warnings and I have done a bit of looking into that and at the moment that does seem to be a thing so it is bringing in and it works and it does what it needs to really well that's not a problem but it does tend to throw up quite a lot of console warnings um, at the moment, uh, it's got some uh, legacy information that's not required. So it is bringing in, and I'm not sure if that is what the comment was referring to, but it is bringing in stuff that's just not, it's not neat and tidy yet. Now bear in mind, these guys are still working on all of these things. Um, but yeah, it's not as crisp as perhaps some of the other versions are. Um Gambit stuff, everything I've looked at Gambit stuff is just, it's mwah, chef's kiss mint. It's clean. It works really well. So, um, yeah. And you can see, you know, we've got stuff in for Bard. Uh, we've got stuff in for Fighters, um, including some of those fighter styles and stuff. Now, we're not going to go through all of them. We'll be here forever. Um, it's more about pointing you in the right direction and letting you know these things are here. Uh, fighting style, interception under Paladin. Um, we've got the Rogue, Stroke of Luck, Fancy Footwork. Uh, we've what we've got under Wizard. Um, portent. Your Portent. Okay, so you're not having to write that little number down and try to remember it. We're going to look at a couple of bits from his um, GPS items uh, and his homebrew items as well. But there are all of these spells in here. Uh, Black Tentacles... Uh, cloud of daggers and things like that so again if you're not using ddb importer um, and even if you are some of these might not work as well as you want gambit's got you covered at least with a range of them uh, the identify spell uh, ray of sickness 
um, is another version of shocking grasp. So <laughs> we've got some repetition, uh, which means you get to pick and choose. All right, let's 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 play with a couple of these items. Now, in my live game, I am using the torch mod, uh, which is really good. Again, if you go to the playlist for um, add-ons, go right back, right back towards the beginning of that. We looked at Torch. It was one of the first ones I found that went, oh, that is a game changer. Well, that's now redundant. <laughs> and in fairness, it's been redundant for a little while. Um, oh, sorry, no, not redundant. That's the wrong phrase. It's been, um, there are other options that we can use instead of using the Torch add-on. So we don't need to keep using add-ons for stuff that actually there's other ways of doing it that may be preferable for you. Uh, and this is an example. So let's uh, open Sorryman's character sheet. Um, I'm going to get rid of that hooded lantern that he has. Get rid of that. Uh, I haven't got, uh, I'm going to get rid of that as well because I'm going to show that in a minute. I didn't clean up before starting the video. What a surprise professional so let's give him this hooded lantern so this has been modified by gambit um, for this purpose we can uh, let's equip it because we should have that equipped we're also going to look at one of these homebrew items and use this flame oil let's bring that across again I'm going to equip it so that we've got that available to us All right uh, let's bring across a torch okay well, let's equip it. We equip everything. <laughs> Sorry, man, the octopus. Okay, so how do some of these work? Bearing in mind that we're using uh, we're using gambits. Let me just clear that chat for us. Let's say Sorryman decides we're not in combat. I want to light a torch. If I click on torch, just like I would as if it was a weapon, I get a pop-up box. Would I like to light a torch? Yes. Now, you just saw, there's an error message up there. What's that? Oh, okay, that was a sequencer issue. That, don't worry about that. Um, you can see we've now got this icon, top left-hand corner, that shows we've got a torch. We've also got this little graphic here, which is quite interesting. Um, and you probably saw it light up. Um, if I click it again, it's now saying... What would I like to do with it? Would I like to light it again, or light a new torch, or extinguish it? Let's click extinguish, and you saw the light levels drop, and it disappeared. So the player can very easily, from their character sheet, oh no, it's now told me I haven't got enough torch. I only put one in, didn't I? I lit it, then I extinguished it. It's automatically consumed my torch. <laughs> Let's give myself a torch back. So I can light that torch, or rather, I can say I want to. I've, it's showing me I've got the torch out. I can light that, lovely jubbly. Um, oh, it's a little flame, so I can find that, that's easy. It's just an animation that's missing. I guess it wants to put a little flame um, animation on there. It's just not finding the right one because of, um, obviously I've got the sequence set up wrong. I've done it again, I've left Discord open, curses. Um, yeah, how nice. Click it again, and then it says, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to light a new one or extinguish? If I extinguish, it's gone. It turns everything off, turns the lighting off. And, of course, I've now run out of torches down there. Hooded Lantern's going to work the same. Let's click Hooded Lantern. And because it's a hooded lantern, I can choose to have it light, dim, or put it out. Let's go with light, bosh. And just to prove the point, if I uh, move Sorryman around, we should see that, that, especially if I move him over here, you can see that it's getting darker where that goblin is because the light is moving further away and it gets brighter as I come in close to him. And I've got this lovely little icon there showing he's definitely got a lantern. So like, no, no, I've got both hands free. Have you? Because you haven't. You've got your lantern on. It It's nicer than Torch, I think. Like this little animation. Now, that doesn't mean to say that it runs smoother than Torch. If you've got a lot of these things running, bear that in mind, your poor users on the other end. Uh, and I can extinguish that. Um, and this, because it uses oil, um, this is not denying me the option to relight it if I want to. So really, really nice. And that's just an example of the type of items that you, you get with um, Chris is pre-made in his compendium. I want to look at flame oil here. Now just hovering over this, now this is one that is um, 
in inverted commas homebrew it's in his homebrew lot it says as a bonus action you can apply this oil to your equipped weapons the application lasts for one minute and while it's applied your weapons are effectively considered to be magical from the purposes of damage reduction uh, and damage resistances and damage immunities uh, and your weapon should also deal 1d6 extra fire damage on all attacks. Okay, so we've got that equipped. Um, and we can do our normal attacks against this poor goblin. Of course we can. Let's hit it with our quarter staff. Whoops. Boom. And there we go. It's seriously bleeding. Now we've just done a normal attack roll. A 1d20 plus our bonuses. And then we've done our normal one-handed damage with our quarter staff. Um, 1d6 plus 3. Let's heal our little goblin friend up here. Poor thing. I ought to give some, I ought to use something with a lot more hit points. <laughs> so sorry man doesn't pound him quite so quickly. Um, now, if I click flame oil, it's going to ask me, am I going to consume it and do I want to use it? So let's say, yes, I'm going to use it. There we go. We add flame oil. I get the chat message and I get that little icon in the top to say we've got it. And under here... On my effects, I've got a temporary effect, 60 seconds worth of flame oil. Now, what I didn't do, and I should have done, was make sure these two are in combat. Whoops a daisy. Should be fine. Should be fine. Let's start that combat. Pop our combat tracker out here. Okay, so the goblin's going to skip his go because he's stupid. So Sorryman now should pass any damage reductions, and I did test that with something that actually had damage reductions and it does work. But now when I attack with that quarter staff, boom, it killed it outright. On the right hand side, again, it's a st standard attack, 1d20, but the damage, whoops, the damage is 1d6 plus 3 plus 1d6 so it is applying that extra damage so you saw me add that to the character sheet i copied it from the srd bam it's working uh, that's what i love about gambit's items is they they work straight out of the box um the only thing we had slightly was with that torch because my animations it's not finding the right animation uh that's relatively easy to fix I'm not going to fix it in this video uh, <laughs> we're going to do things like that later all right, so keep an eye over here. We've got Oil Flame. It's uh, available for eight rounds now. If we go through some of these, we can see it's now seven rounds, six rounds, five rounds, and it should automatically, because again, there we go, it's now removed that effect because it's run out. Now remember, that's that times up that actually um, triggers the removing of those effects when they should be removed. So fantastic, really good. We, I love, I should say we, I love Gambit stuff. You make up your own mind. <laughs> and I'll fight you in the comments if you disagree. I know you might, you might have really good reasons for not wanting to use Gambit stuff, of course, and that's fine. So, yeah, we've got all of this stuff now. Now, what I would recommend with any of these, whether, it's, whether you're kind of going, oh, I'm using it from the MIDI QOL sample because that works for me, or I'm pulling it from Gambit, or I'm pulling it from... Um, the DDB, um, the D and D Beyond, because we've got these items in here. Um, I'm pulling it from. It doesn't matter which one you pull from, as long as it's the one that works for you. But you will have duplicates. So this is where we did a video on creating your own compendiums and potentially backing up. That might be where you want to go. I'm going to create my own compendium of all the items that I want. And therefore, I can go, I want Gambit's Lantern. Uh, I want torches from DDBI. I want uh, that Chainmail Armor plus one um, flame resistance. I want to pull that from Chris's pre-mades. So you can compile your own compendium of the items that you want to, to use so that you always know the version you've got is, the, is a working version for your game. And if you want to make adjustments, like I want to change the animation on that or something like that or change the text description, you can do that and you're keeping your own version of it nice and safe in a way that works with your current system. Um, because unlike what I have done in the past for video reasons, not because I'm just completely nuts, um, you don't want to be updating your system every time there's a release. 
you need to find a stable place and at the moment on version 12 that stable place is the D&D game engine 3.3.1 that's the stable place to be for MIDI QOL and everything else that's what they're building these items to make sure they're compatible with um, so once you've kind of got your stable platform I'm not going to be updating certainly not the D&D engine until my Curse of Strahd campaign is finished that could be months and months probably will be months and months because what's the point in updating and breaking the game when it's working um i might break that rule completely depending on if we need to move forward for D, &D purposes in which case i might look at i need a second license for foundry so i've got my stable playing platform for my games and then I've got a version of Foundry that I'm using, so a, a dual install, so I can update one version of that for you guys to keep the videos going and to keep the videos kind of up to date and to show you all the reasons you shouldn't update quite yet. <laughs> you know how it goes. I make the mistake so you don't have to. Right, I'm gambling. No, I'm not gambling. I'm gabbling. It's because I was going to say gambits. Um, right, so let's look at a couple of other things we've got in Gambit's pre-made. So the items is just a, actually, it's a relatively small part of it. We have some other features here. Now what I need, do need to do is end this combat for a purpose. Um, let's look. So we've got some, let's start at the bottom. Why not? Generic features. If I click this, it there's some generic features that we can implement if we want to. So in a Mage Slayer, the Opportunity, the Tax, and the sentinel feet and again we haven't got time uh, because at some point I have to sleep and eat um, we haven't got time to go through in detail all of these but let's look at opportunity attack I'm going to click that on save changes okay so you know how opportunity attack is supposed to work if these two are in combat let's begin that combat roll our initiatives etc thank you very much uh, and it is the gobbo's uh, who's go is it Oh, it's Sorryman's Go, is it? Yep, Sorryman's Go. Um, we know how opportunity attack should work. If I move out of range of this goblin during combat, he should get a chance to give me a splat. So let's see if that's true. We get a pop-up box. Goblin, opportunity attack. Now, there is a timer on that. It's counting down. So uh, it's not going to sit there forever because it's effectively halted the game for us, waiting for that to react. Um, and he's lost his chance to give that opportunity attack, but I can easily trigger that again. So this is the default weapon that this goblin has in his hand, his scimitar. I can click pause to pause that countdown while we discuss with the players or whatever it might be. So we don't have to let that time out. As the DM, I can go, hang on, pause that. Um, now also, I can choose to favourite if there's multiple options and things, I can choose to favourite that. So let's say that this goblin does want to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, we're going to just click yes, do that. Uh, and it didn't. Oh, it's because it's Sorryman's go. So yeah, so now the goblin can go ahead and make his attack um, and pull that through. Now I was expecting that to, let's move on to the goblin's turn and do it the other way i was expecting the goblin to auto attack there um so goblin moves away from sorryman would sorryman like to make a quarter staff attack let's say yes there we go that's what i was expecting it to do so i'm going to try that again it might be because i let it time out and then did it again that might be what confused it because i didn't take that up opportunity that first time let's heal up my gobbo Okay, so you can see that that did work and it allowed that attack and Sorryman actually splatted him. So Sorryman the Wides go again. He's going to move in and move out. Goblin, would you like to make an attack of opportunity? Yes, there we go. So that, that worked fine. It's because I let it time out the first time and it went, well, you've wasted your opportunity. You're not going to get that again. You've already said no. So that does work. The Goblin has now also taken its attack of opportunity for a pathetic three points of damage. Uh, which Sorryman is pretty much not worried about. Um, so, but if I go back, it, it has triggered again. Yeah. So, I mean, normally you wouldn't do that. Normally you wouldn't have a character dancing in and out for the same token. So that's not realistic that it's done that. And of course, we are saying that we've... That's good. It doesn't trigger if I move with the goblin because it's not the goblin's turn. 
But here we would say, well, hang on a minute, you've used it. We can say no to that. So that's fine. So that works. And that's beautiful. Um, the fact that it's look, looking a bit clunky is because I'm not doing combat properly, am I? I'm just dicking around and running my tokens around all over the place. So it's I'm not it's not realistic scenario for us. But that works. Um, and for a lot of people, if I skip back to Sorryman's Go, that's what they want in their games is a nice prompt to say, oh, do you want to take it or not? Now, there is a reason, let's just say no. There's a reason when we were looking at the MIDI QOL settings, if I just quickly pop into those, into the workflow, into reactions, there is a section in here where you can turn on player reactions for things like Attack of Opportunity. But as you can see, Chris's pre made is already taking care of Attack of Opportunity, which is one of the one of the most common reactions. Um, so I purposely didn't look at this at that time because I didn't want to, um, you know, say, oh yeah, do this, and then we get to Chris's pre made and it's doing other amazing stuff. Okay, so what else have we got in Chris's pre made options here? So we just looked at Opportunity Attack, although there's a couple of others. We've got class features we can enable as well. So some of these might be, uh, you might know what these are. Some of them might be a bit of a mystery. Some of them are, you know, sort of a bit more advanced. But we've got things like Witch's Hex, uh, Instinctive Charm, Indomitable. Um, so we've got lots of things in here we could choose to turn on. Again, don't want this video to be like 12 days long. Uh, but some of them it says like click for homebrew options. So auto uh, enable auto success on use so you might have a homebrew and say that always successful so i'm going to homebrew that rule so there's some extra rules built in here which is quite nice instinctive charm doesn't have one um fighting style protection it looks like that does so enable only on a successful attack okay so if that's your rule you can put that on so these are all in here as well which is beautiful um, we also have spells. Now, there's a couple of spells that are really, really tricky for the game engine to deal with. Counter spell. You cast a spell, but before the spell actually happens, somebody gets the opportunity to potentially counter spell, so you need to resolve the counter spell before you can continue completing the original spell. That's a bit difficult. <laughs> and it's those kind of really challenging things that Gambit has stepped up to and, and developed stuff for. So counter spell is in there, uh, power word, rebound, and our well, a favourite of many, Silvery Barbs. Another one that's really quite tricky to implement is not, you know, Firebolt is easy. You fire it, do I hit it, do some damage, yeah? Some of these are really, really tricky. So those are the bits that Gambit has really taken on board and tried to solve things like Attack of Opportunity. And we've got some general settings in here as well about, um, you know, hiding templates, making them transparent, etc., so what you can probably see is not only do we get some beautiful items from Gambit, but we also get some of those really complex things like Attack of Opportunity that, even though I was doing a ridiculous uh, combat sample, they work, and they work beautifully, and we've got really nice pop-ups that make sense, and you can understand, and your players can see exactly what it is. Um, now... I would be using that attack of opportunity to pop up box. Let's get it to pop up again. I would be using this and the first time it comes up, I'm going to be clicking pause to explain to my players, this is what happens when attack of opportunity occurs. Um, you know, you can choose to do it. You can click yes or no, um, but you can only select a weapon that you've got equipped. Yeah, so no pulling a maul out of your back pocket to use for attacks of opportunity only. We're not having any of that rubbish. Um, but then in future, I, I will tell them, look, there is a countdown. If you miss it, you miss it. Yeah, pay attention. Because if you're, if you're, if the player's not paying attention, the character's not paying enough attention to, uh, to take advantage of that. So, uh, compare, you know, when we look at all the stuff that we've got in Gambit's pre mades this is a very light touch. And it's more to show you what it can do so that you know, yes, that's the kind of thing that I want to have a proper look at and a play with in my game. You can go and shove that in and, uh, and you know, off you, off you go. Um, and again, bit of advice on those items is, yeah, pick the item, regardless of where it comes from, the one that works for you, and then, th and then put it into your own compendium so you've got your version. 
Because if you go, oh yeah, right, I need a hooded lantern. Have I got Omni Search on? I've not got Omni Search on. Let's stick Omni Search on right now and show you. I love Omni Search. It's become one of my absolute faves. Um, if I can remember what it's called, because it doesn't start with the word Omni Search, does it? Uh, <laughs> there we go. Spotlight Omni Search. <laughs> Oh, shush. So, uh, yeah, so if I come in here and I go, oh, yeah, my character's just bought a lantern um, and I want a lantern. I've now got a uh, lantern. I've now got lantern covered. I've now got lantern revealing, lantern revealing, bullseye lantern, bullseye lantern, lantern hooded lantern. And I'm going to start getting a huge amount of lanterns. So which one do I want? Well, if I know that it's going to, if I put them in my own compendium, I can just look for my own compendium rather than going, now, do I want the DDB one or is it the GPS one I want? Um, is it the MIDI QOL one I want or is it the SRD one I want? Um, hang on, what's that one for? Um, you know, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? Bullseye Lantern, do I need this MIDI QOL sample item or the SRD or this SRD? Why have I got two different SRD ones? Which is the correct one? I don't know. Hang on a minute. I've got three Hooded Lanterns SRD ones. Which one is which? Which? Where are they coming from? Yeah, you don't want that, do you? So if you stick it in your own compendium, you know, I might call mine, you know, go Golem's Bits or Golem's Items or something like that. I just know I'm going to pull from there rather than remembering which one it is. Right, anyway, I'm gabbling again because it's what I do. Um, but there we go. So I hope that's been useful. Um, I, Gambits is one of those, if you're doing automation, I mean, it, it, for me, it's a bit of a no-brainer that I want that in my games. Um, but everybody's setup is different. Um, what you're doing is different. So you might find that, oh, I really like to use that, but it's not going to work with what I do elsewhere. But anyway, that's the end of this video leave a like, leave a comment, uh, subscribe. That's the other one, isn't it? <laughs> subscribe if you've not already done so. And I'm going to go away and see if I can find a free course on how to be a professional YouTuber because I apparently suck at it. <laughs> Yet yeah, you're still here, aren't you? Take care, everyone. I will see you in the next one.